Welcome to Funky Town with Bev and Kim. You're listening to Radio Pulse, the sound of NUS. Hey Kim, have you watched the latest movie, Perks of Being a Wallflower, yet? I haven't actually, but I'm really excited to catch it this Thursday. I heard it's really good. Yeah, my friends were talking about on Twitter one of their favorite <laughs> rom-coms for now. Yeah, that was just like a big thing trending on when it started when it came out, actually. Well, I'm not sure whether like the whole world can say that this is their new favorite rom-com, but there are certain classics that we should take note of, like things like When Harry Met Sally, You've Got Mail, like those, those are the classic rom-coms that I could never forget. Yeah, those were, I think Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks, they really did it really well in Sleepless in Seattle and You've Got Mail, I mean. Every time I think of rom-coms, those are the first few movies I actually think of. And then when it comes to the 2000s, I mean, then I think about Heath Ledger in like, 10 Things mm-hmm. I Hate About You. Or that, what was that show again with Broly. Amanda Bynes? Oh, She's the Man. Yeah, she's the Man yeah. was pretty good. That was actually really entertaining. And it's quite interesting, the fact that it's all based on Shakespeare. So that was quite interesting. Yeah, that they yeah. actually use this... The basis of his stories. Yeah, it's all, there's so much romances from the past, and mm-hmm. you actually just have all these different imp- interpretations, mm-hmm. and whichever works best, I guess, with wha- whatever makes sense in today's society and will make money, you know? Yeah, and another thing about these rom coms, like a lot of people think that when wa- when we're watching them, it's just an imaginary situation that would never ever happen in real life, but um, as, it, as the time goes by, you find that a lot of movies and in especially the modern ones, they're really relatable. Like you also have things like um best friends getting together and lovers meeting in their workplace. I think that's also increasingly becoming more common. I learn a lot of from these shows and it, it teaches me a lot about being open to all types of relationships and how like in the most weird circumstances people can still fall in love. And I think that is something that makes me very hopeful. Yeah. I mean, you could come up with your own, like, romantic comedy. I mean, there's a whole pattern of how to make a romantic mm-hmm. comedy. You have to, the boy meets the girl, you know, make sure everyone knows that they belong together. The hero pursues his romantic interest to show that there's so much love there. Um, hero pursues her other interests. So there's some sort of conflict there. Um, lovers must be separated with some large obstacles, whether physical or psychological. And there's got to be the best friend as well, Kim. You know, there's got to be some comic relief to tell you, you know, also what the important things is of life are. And the final grand gesture where to do something spectacular to, to actually win back the love interest. And that's just a whole complete rom-com. And I think I'm sure all of us could have our <laughs> own editions of rom-coms and you know we could be future rom-com directors as well i think it's <laughs> pretty simple but i think it it does actually open us up to potential possibilities you know how things are not always fixed in certain ways i mean i mean in my grandmother's g- generation things were pretty arranged or mm-hmm. you would you know things were kept simple and i don't my i think my grandmother actually shared that she has actually never kissed my grandfather who's actually passed away more than 10 years ago but I know I went on she that. Yeah, it. I know. I think oh. she was just, we were just trying to share with her like what people actually do today. And she was just like, oh, they do that? <laughs> what is that for? You know, it's just, it's just really funny for her yeah. to actually see how things actually have changed for her. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people have very different takes on what love is. Like in the past, it was, it's just a very sacred thing that you don't take for granted. It's things like you have to get married before, you know, you sleep together or like going on official dates where the guy always pays for the dinner after a nice movie. But nowadays, it's just anything's a date. You have like virtual dates. You have like, oh, let's go out and get a Starbucks. That's a date. And you have study dates. And it's just a, a very different interpre- interpretations of romance and dating i know some rules that my mom told me about dating was you know never get into a serious relationship during your exams but it's not good for you mm-hmm. always go out you know in a group don't go out with it alone with a guy because you know you know in a group if you get to mingle with other people as well and that's sh- it's what you should be focusing mm-hmm. on you know before you're in your 20s so i mean that was the code to follow but whether we actually followed it or not it's another issue altogether <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean I mean, all these things that movies actually tell us, you know, 
in my big fat Greek wedding about how the the best way to get into a man's heart is through his stomach, which is kind of funny, I guess, you know, how we always bake things for people. Yeah, I mean, and then you just ask yourself, who actually makes the first move on dates, you know? I think it was in the papers the other day, like, who pays for mm-hmm, it? Mm-hmm. And like I don't... going Dutch and all? Yeah. yeah. I mean, who actually decides, you know, I mean... Is it okay? Do you, before you go on a date, you're like, okay, we're gonna pay for each. I mean, pay for each our own meals, or like, when do you decide? You know, do you make it up front that this is actually gonna be, I'm taking charge. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, who decides these things? And have you? I mean, have you heard of girls giving their numbers to guys in clubs and like, you know? I have, I have. I've <laughs> never actually heard of that. I mean, <laughs> I've always asked myself whether I would do it. You know, if I see a really hot guy in the club and I'm like, yeah, you know, we should totally be friends. <laughs> when all I want to do is just like Google at him. <laughs> but I don't know. You know, it's just funny how we we still pretty much are focused on a very traditional kind of mm-hmm. courtship. Yeah. This whole idea of romanticism. You know, I don't know. It's a funny thing. This whole. <laughs> this whole concept of dating and love and it it is like i would although you might want to defend um your parents generation for being more conservative and like being aware of your own safety but i think in those days you just have this very fixed idea of what romance is you just have to do this 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 and then you'll like fall in love and you'll get married and you'll have kids and then you carry on to the next generation but in in that sense, it makes you feel very restricted in terms of who you can love and who you get to know. Because in those days, like your parents would probably never let you, um, for girls, like probably never let you go out with a guy that's shorter than you or 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 who's poorer than you. But I think in this modern age where we have different ideas of romance and love, a lot of people are breaking a lot of barriers and they are actually looking for people who are not typically people that they should go for or they would normally go for and i think that's just really amazing to see like countless love stories it it just happens out of the most amazing situation i mean speaking of breaking traditions i mean i know jamie cullum the Mm -hmm. singer i think his wife um rodal's granddaughter i can't remember Uh her name right now but the, she they're dating i mean i think they're married yes mm-hmm. and she's like heads taller than him but jamie uh, cullum is short yeah so. he is he's <laughs> fine i mean but he sings he probably could sing her to sleep you know yeah, every yeah, night um nicole kidman's pretty tall she's tall than keith urban you know that was pretty interesting with her and yeah. tom cruise as well like yeah. towering over them <laughs> all these men and but. it's also nice to know like you see certain families out there and like perhaps one of them has a disability like girl would legally care for him like, you should just go all out just because they're in love, you know? Nobody's there to stop them. But for some reason, let's say in the past, she was she belonged to some rich family, but they would never allow her to get married. They'd probably rather have her arranged and be in an arranged marriage than let her marry a guy who has a disability because they just don't feel that the girl has um, enough to support herself and her husband. Like, they feel like the husband should be doing everything are changing so fast i don't know what's going to be like in 10 years you know what mm-hmm. what are expectations of relationships and i'm just happy being single right now you know <laughs> i i don't mind Amen. having a meal <laughs> on my own reading a book you know just i'm comfortable being on my own right now and i don't think i'm like any close or ready for any relationship it's just really <laughs> scary all these expectations you know you're just like mm-hmm. am i emotionally stable to am i can i do this can we do this you know <laughs> Is this actually going to last? Cause some people believe in the one and the whole idea of destiny and rather not rather not waste all the emotions right now and just, mm-hmm. you know, just wait. So I do think that I'm perfectly fine being single and that could be a difference in what people think about romance and love in this day and age because now it's like, oh, being single is fine, but in the past it'd be like, oh no, you must get married. Yeah, you must have you're, kids. You should be... When you're 18, you should have a family yeah. or something. You know, you're 15, you should. Oh, you could. It's like now you're 13, you're thinking of getting a boyfriend. You're too old. You're yeah. too old. <laughs> I mean, when I was younger, I always dreamt I would marry a musician. You know, have I had this idea that he'd probably play, play all this romantic um, music for me and serenade me with like, <laughs> you know, poems for to describe our love. But that was just stupid. I think <laughs> you know you had all these like boy bands and they would sing about these love songs you're just like i can so relate to this you know <laughs> i don't know this Those is my th- life yeah gone are the days song. though i think i've actually woken up from that dream and they're not gonna save me <laughs> it's 
speaking of love songs, it's funny how to think how they've changed over the over the years. I mean, especially when you had like the like the geniuses behind Bee Gees, and you had the Temptations with My Girl, and you had Whitney Houston and Celine Dion, and just all the classic love songs. And now it's just absolute rubbish. You have things like. Um, love you like a love song. Yeah, I mean, Sabrina. what? Is, yeah, what? Is, like, she goes what on and mean? on. For like, <laughs> there's no meaning to love. She songs repeats these that days. whole sentence like yeah. over and over again. I'm just really yeah. confused. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you telling me right here? And then there's Justin Bieber. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't really know what he knows about love. Then again, I mean, wh- what do I know? But yeah, well, and then there's Taylor Swift. You belong with me and mm-hmm. all these and love story and like. Yeah, I mean. I think Bruno Mars was just really confusing. I I'll catch a grenade for you, and then <laughs> I I don't know. I was just like, what 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 love do you have for me? <laughs> you know. Just and I was just going through like the top l- love songs of 2012, and we have like we found love by Rihanna, sexy, and I didn't know it. I mean, the one that got away. I don't know. I mean, how many of these songs actually? I don't know. I'm not one to judge, but okay, I am one to judge. But really, <laughs> I mean, "Love You Like a Love Song" and "I'll Catch a Grenade for You." That those were the songs which just I was just this doesn't this is not a love song. This should not be considered a love song. Oh, I just can't stand it. I was just so upset listening to it. I mean, ah, that's not a love song. I think the ballads of those days, they. They hold a lot of meaning despite like simple lyrics and simple melodies, but like people these days are just complicating everything and just just losing the essence of a love song. But don't you think it's quite interesting to see how the music industry has changed from the past to the present, and you know how you used to have jukeboxes, and then now you have like um downloading all your songs online and being an absolute pirate. I think that 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 could be something we could look into. Yeah, I mean, I, it's just interesting to see how music has changed. I mean, we have Genius on Apple now. We get mm-hmm. to, we have all these playlists that we can all create and share on YouTube or like on 8-tracks. And it's just interesting how people are putting a lot more effort into playing around the type of the sounds they actually have. And you have auto-tune coming in and yeah. just like, what is this? Is this music or is this noise? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just a little bit confused Sound. there. But I think we should just, we could talk about how music has changed, you know. Yep, for those of you who are interested in the progression of music over the years, you can actually catch us next week because that's all the time we have for today. And if you have any love songs that you care to share with us that are better than I Love You Like a Love Song and I Catch a Grenade for You, please tweet us at b for bev b f o r b e v or at Kimbo Nutter, K-I-M-B-O-N-U-T-T-E-R. Thank you for listening to Radio Pulse, Sound of NUS.